Are you tired of wasting time and money on bad prints because of poor image quality? Let's fix that right now. Today, I'm gonna be showing you three free tools to check your image quality before ordering your DTF transfers because nothing hurts more than getting ruined designs due to poor image quality. So why is image quality important? In DTF printing, one of the main challenges we face is image quality, where there's low resolution, unwanted backgrounds, or tricky gradients. We have to be like file doctors, spotting issues before they ruin a print. While there are tons of tools out there, I'm focusing on free programs that can save you from costly mistakes. Now, first one I'm gonna be talking about today is gonna be an online program called PhotoP. It is a free web-based photo and graphics editor that works directly on your browser. It is often compared to Adobe Photoshop because it has similar tools and features, allowing you to work with PSD files, editing images, creating graphics, and changing design layouts. Now the best part, PhotoP supports printer-friendly files like PSD, Adobe Illustrator, PNG, JPEG, and SVGs without needing an actual Adobe subscription. So let's run a sample file through PhotoP and let's break it down. All right guys, first thing we're gonna do is head to Photo P. Now, what we're gonna do here, you can either drag and drop your files or you can go ahead and open from your computer files here. I have a couple files that I've loaded up so that we can test this here with. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the different outcomes that we see. So this is gonna be the first image that we're testing out. Just like Photoshop, you can go to image and then you can go to image size. That will basically give you the DPI resolution with the dimensions. Now, as you see, the default is gonna be at pixels. I'm gonna change this to inches, and it basically gives me a 6.8 width by eight inch height at 72 DPI. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but the best printing results you're gonna get is from 300 DPI. So this is actually a little bit less than optimal resolution that we like to print with, but overall it will print, especially if you're not gonna to have to resize this or make this a lot bigger. So a quick action, just like Photoshop, Control Alt I is gonna bring up the image size. So I like to use this hotkey quite often if I'm doing any type of resizing. And let's say if the customer did want something like a 10 inch design, click that, click 10, it brings it to 10 by 11. 7.74 that's enlarging it so actually let me go back i'm just going to cancel this do it again uh, click on the resampling because you can see what happens when you enlarge it there at 10 by 11.7 it gives me a 47 dpi resolution which is really really poor at that point so i'm just going to pretend to let it do its thing and as you guys can see it's very very pixelated so this is not optimal to print with the other thing that I'm noticing is that the edges, there are semi-transparent pixels here. This is not going to do a good job when you're doing transfers. It's gonna leave a cloudy outline. You're gonna get a lot of extra white noise that you don't want. And it's hard to spot this with Photo P. So you might have to use a different program to really spot something like this. Let's go ahead and open up the next piece of artwork. All right, this is the next piece of artwork here. Overall, really good design. You've got some nice gold lettering with some gradients here, but everything is within the bound, so it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and check the image size. So sorry to hockey, I'm gonna do this one a little slower. Image, image size, you're gonna see it's a very large image, 41 inches by 40 inches, but it's at 72 resolution. Most of the time, somebody's gonna say this is not good enough, so on and so forth. Go ahead and resize it down to your desired dimension first, so 11, and it's gonna be 11 by 10.5 and you're getting get 272 dpi at this exact size so it's less than 300 but overall it's not bad i would say this is decent enough to get printed however um, i do notice there is something right here that is kind of like a shadow effect not quite sure uh, it can be a little bit deceiving these are the issues that you might run into if you're using a program like photo p you can't really spot everything that we're talking about but after checking resolution this one is decent enough so so let's go ahead and open up another artwork to review. Now this one is actually an artwork that was sent by one of our customers. We've gone back and forth quite a bit to really dial this down to make sure we have the highest resolution so that all the white lettering and all the tiny text, everything prints out fine. It actually had a lightning effect that did not look great when you printed it. So we did a lot of fixing here. So we're gonna go ahead and check the final result of what this dimension is. Again, it opened it up at 72 DPI, but at 50 
by 80, which is too big. We only want this at 11. So we're gonna not gonna press enter right away because it's just gonna go ahead and knock you out of this window. We're just gonna click out of this and at 11 by 17.4, we're gonna get over 300 DPI. So technically this is big enough. I believe actually the customer wanted 12 inches. So there, 12 by 19, that 300 DPI, this one is gonna print pretty well. I don't see anything wrong with it so far. So let's go and look at another image here. This is a uh, glitter design that's made for a UV wrap. So the dimensions, I want this at 300 DPI. Let's see, it gives me 6.6 .6 by 2.14. So this is where you would really need to find out what the actual dimension of the print job is, because I wouldn't know. So without knowing the actual print dimension, you don't know the actual true DPI. And we may or may not know if this is going to work. From what I see, it does look transparent. But let's go ahead and open another one up. This one is also another wrap. Let's go ahead and check the resolution. At 300 DPI, what they're allowing me is 6.67 by 3.71. So again, you would have to really check if this is the right dimension for this artwork. Lastly, let's check on this artwork here. Um, I already can tell that this is not a great artwork. It looks like they ran through some program to remove the background. So there's a lot of leftover artifacts here. This one can be tricky, but let's go ahead and take a look at the specs itself. So image, image quality, and it is at 72 resolution. Let's go ahead and do 300. If we were to print at 300, you're gonna get really tiny 2.16 by three inch height artwork, which is, you're not gonna be able to print much with this one. The main thing is very fuzzy artwork images. Don't let this one fool you. It doesn't look good at all you're gonna have to definitely fix this up, but we would definitely be able to see this better using other tools. So this is the first method that we're showing you is the photo P. So let me go ahead and show you the other program. All right guys, so for our second tool, we've got our print ready flow tool. This is an all in one tool that we designed in house to help you prep your artwork so that you can order transfers like a pro. This tool will work as your personal pre-print checklist letting you thoroughly inspect your files with our file validator and it's going to help you remove any unwanted backgrounds clearly and lastly it's going to help you knock out colors with precise printing it is completely web-based so there's no fancy graphics cards needed now currently this tool is invite only but if you want early access check the link in the description below we're going to go ahead and give you an invite only link so that you can test this tool out so let's go ahead and take a look at the tool that we have here this is going to be the flow now there is going to be a couple of tools that you're going to be seeing here the file validator the color knockout background remover image upscaler downscaler image vectorizer the one that we're focusing on today is going to be the validator um, we're going to go ahead and click on the validator now it's going to be able to accept files that are png jpegs and up to 50 megabytes at this point we can always make some changes in the future but as of right now of this presentation this is how it's going to be set up let's go ahead and load up some artwork like what we did earlier so into the downloads folder we're going to start with this image here now as you see it popped out so fast and it was able to analyze this image here. The cool thing about this image, I'm gonna bring it back here, is there are some gradient edges that you see around this image. On Photo P, you can't really tell what's gonna happen here, but if you use this tool, you can slide through and you can see the semi-transparent pixels. You can actually zoom in if you need to, but this gives you an idea of areas that are going to be printing with a little bit of white noise around the object because it's not a solid surface edge. This is a quick tool to help you know if you're going to be getting that cloudiness on around your artwork. Now the other thing that it does if you scroll down is it'll tell you the resolution, the current size that it's at, the current DPI, the file size, and if it has a background or not. And if you're trying to get this printed, let's say your customer wants this at 11 inches. Let's just say you're at 11 inches. Well, I'm just going to scroll up. 
it will bring this with the ratios at 11 by 12.88 and it's going to have analysis that says that it's pretty low in resolution and you need to increase it by 255 at this point in order for this to print out very very nicely so already it tells you there is some fixing that needs to be done this is not going to pass the checker so let's go ahead and upload another file let's go and take a look at this one this one is the file that would normally cause a lot of headaches for a lot of people a normal person would just go ahead and prep this file get it printed as i mentioned earlier little do you know there is actually a little bit of shading around this edge right here and if i bring this swipe through you can see the transparency in the image this semi-transparent image is going to print this cloudy noise around the artwork which is going to show especially if it goes on a black shirt you're not going to want that this tool will help you catch that right away and if you zoom in you see the edging little bit of white but overall very very solid this is going to contract perfectly you're not going to see an outline around the print it was also uploaded as a very very large size so 41 by 40 inches almost which is huge if i really needed to downscale this to let's say 10, 10 inches is really what i wanted to print it shows the analysis passing all everything so this is good it would pass what you're trying to print at 300 dpi the only thing is it would have this extra shadow effect which is not desired this is going to save you money if you catch artwork like this all right the next one we're going to load up is this artwork here let's go ahead and bring this map over even with the artwork having white text you can swipe this across and you'll see everything that's going to be printing and then the red again it's semi-transparent which is the effect of the lightning and that's what you would see around those edges but again it's going to be fine to print that because that's the effect that they want but this would point out exactly where the lines of transparency is and because the underdog is supposed to be in white that's why it reflects in black all right and then if you go down here you can see that it was uploaded at a very large size 50 by 80 almost and if we're trying to print at let's say 12 inches 12 by 19 it would be perfect if they're trying to create something even larger than that it may lower the resolution, but not by much. I would say 7 DPI, it's not going to make it or break an image unless you're going to be doing something that's extravagantly large, then you definitely need to revisit this. But 12 by 19, this one's going to be fine. Let's go ahead and upload another image here. And this is going to be the UV cup wrap. I can tell that everything looks good. There is transparent. There are some semi transparent in between there, but overall looks pretty good. If we're going to do this one at let's say nine inches it's a little less than optimal but again this artwork here i'm not exactly sure the size that we're printing with so it may or may not work but this one here it turned all black because this is not a transparent background completely solid so you will have to figure out if this is the effect that you want and if you're trying to do something like so resolution does need to be increased a little bit now let's go ahead and load this other artwork here i'm gonna go to swipe whoa see this is a good example of the artwork that is really really bad they ran it through some kind of background removal it's a quick job to get done but if you look and swipe at the transparency there is so much leftover artifacts everywhere it just does not look very very clean you see those lines it just does not look clean hard to really tell so you definitely would want to vectorize an artwork at this point to get the edges sharp, remove this extra black outline around the letters. That's how you would kind of fix this. But let's look. Decent size, 9 by 13, but it's low in resolution. It's not optimal to print with. They want you to increase this by at least 228 in order to be at 300 dpi at the 9 by 13 dimension. So this is the second way of a validator. You don't need to have Photoshop to look at anything. You can basically look at here get it everything analyzed it'll tell you whether it's good or not you can also check on backgrounds very very easily here so this is the second method of getting it done now i'm going to go ahead and jump into the third method and this is going to be right on our website it's going to be our gang sheet builder so this is transfers you're going to go ahead and head over to gang sheet builder whether it's regular dtf or uv they both work well choose the gang sheet of your size you can choose any one and edit it afterwards we're going to click on build your gang sheet and this is going to take you to the builder you technically do not need to be ready to order your transfers to use this tool you can use this tool for free save it on your profile come back and revisit it later if you need to 
but the main thing is it is free and it is really easy to use. Now, once you're in this builder, go ahead and upload the images that you're gonna wanna work with. I'm just gonna go ahead and upload all of this. I added an extra image there, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and load everything all at once. This is a quite a bit of images, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change the artboard, make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna wait for everything to populate. So this one detected a background. Um, this one has an intended background, so I'm just gonna go, go ahead and continue as is. Now let's go ahead and start popping these in here. I am just going to pop them all in there. Let's go ahead and play around with the dimensions. Okay, so now that we have all our, our artwork laid out, obviously it's not efficiently laid out, but the main thing I'm gonna do here is to show you guys how to read image quality. So the first one I'm gonna click on is going to be this cross image here. Um, I can always zoom in if I need to. In case this one has a black background here, I can technically go to the settings on the left-hand corner, change the background so that I can see the displays very well. See, if I did all black, he gets a little washed out, so I'm not able to really see. So if I stuck with gray, I'm able to visually see this. And no, it won't carry on to the print. You're fine to actually leave it like this when you check out with the order. Now, going back to the first object here, it is at a 2.16 inch by three, and this is at 300 resolution. It has the green outline around it, so it is showing you that it is optimal at this size. But again, guys, it wasn't perfect. We saw all the blemishes that this artwork has, but technically, if you wanted to print it as is with this size, it will print. Now, if you want to increase it to make it fit onto a shirt, you're definitely going to lose image quality. Let me go ahead and make a bigger sheet so I can spread this out a little bit. I do want to display this without anything blocking. So let's just move it there. So now it changed this resolution. Let's say I want to print this at seven by 10 the desired dimensions for the customer. It brings the DPI resolution at 92 right here, which of course is less than optimal. So this is not what you wanna do. If I click on this artwork here, it shows this is at 6.6 .6 by 2.41, and it looks pretty good in resolution, 300, just like this one, 300 resolution. If I'm happy with these sizes, it will print and it will print fine. This one right here, let's see if I'm actually able to zoom in and catch any of that through here. So if I was to do this, and then I want to change the background to, let's say per se, uh, red. It's not very, very clear because it's web-based, but this is going to print out a little bit of a white fuzz noise around the print. You would have to catch this before printing it. That's something that's a bit difficult. You would have to go back to the number two tool checker in order to properly catch this. Lastly, this image right here, if the actual intended image was about seven inches, definitely low in quality. It only brings us at 71 DPI, printable, but not ideal. This one right here, a 12 by 19, 300 DPI, high resolution. This one is gonna work just fine. Just like our Transfer Superstars logo, it works just fine unless you're trying to blow up too much, then you start to lose some resolution. But other than that, these are free ways to check out image quality. Let me know if you guys have another free way of doing it. I personally love all these methods here. I think there is value in between each one, but it's most importantly right now that I get your feedback and in, into our tools so that we can understand and develop a better tool for you guys. So make sure you take advantage. Click on the link in our description, take advantage of this tool, play around with it. Give us your feedback. We'd love to hear your comments below. Hope you guys found value in this video. I'll catch you guys on the next one.